Okay, so I am going to be working on these two days of videoing a Christmas order that I received for making two different types of sourdough bread. So here I fed my starter the night before to go ahead and get it nice and active and bubbly to start working on the artisan style loaves that I'm going to be making this morning on this day. So um, I did double the recipe in the video, but I'm going to give you the recipe that I followed for one loaf. And it's going to be 100 grams of active starter. That's why I did it the night before to make sure it was nice and active and rising. 375 grams of warm filtered water. You want that slightly warm, not too hot because you don't want to kill your starter. And then you want to mix those to where they incorporate decent. It's not going to be perfect, but you do want to get it mixed up together. Then I'm adding 500 grams of all-purpose flour. You can use whatever flour you want to use. And then 12 grams of salt. So um, I have all of those put together, and I am getting it mixed up here in the mixer. This was uh, very, very loose, very, very wet. I was not happy with the texture, could not be worked with at all. So I did need to add a little bit more flour. And honestly, after I added this flour here and I checked it again, I still should have added more flour. But I was in a hurry to get dressed to get um, everybody to jujitsu. And so I needed this dough to kind of be done. So like here, I'm taking it off the hook. It is very difficult to deal with. It really needed to mix some more with more added flour. And I did not take the time to do that. I do regret it later. So I covered it. Um, this is uh, beeswax paper, but you need to cover it with something that is um, will seal the air out of it because you don't want it to dry out. And I did let it sit like this the while, while we were gone. When we came back here, I did do what's called a stretch and fold. You're supposed to do it um, four times within the first two hours of it sitting. I just did it whenever I had time to do it on this day. So I, I do it two times, not four times, and they are sev several hours apart. So, I mean, just do it whenever you need to. But the stretch and fold helps um, with it rising. It helps get those nice bubbles in it, gets it nice and fluffy. And so it is, I'm dipping my hands in some um, cool filtered water to moisten my fingers, try and keep it from sticking to my hands too bad. And so I'm going to rotate this bowl around four times and I'm making sure I'm digging down at the bottom of the, pole, of the bowl, pulling it up and stretching it over. So here is the second time that I did it. I'm doing it right before we go to our neighborhood Christmas party. And so I'm wetting my hands again with some cool filtered water. And you can see here, I'm digging down to the bottom of my bowl, lifting up and stretching it over the rest of the dough. I'm rotating the bowl and I'm gonna do it again. So I rotate it and do that, that four times in a rotation. So I did only do the stretch and fold two times within the time frame of this bread rising. So after I, uh, after I do this second stretch and fold before the party, I do cover it. It sits on the counter the rest of the evening and I do come back after the party and I form it in the loaves and let that sit overnight. So this dough does sit out on the counter all day long. I mess with it twice with a stretch and fold and then make sure I cover it back up. But it does sit out on the counter all day long. I did not do any refrigerator time with this dough. So we have come back from the party at this point and you can see this dough is going to be a nightmare to work with. Do not let your dough be like this. If you see that it's still really sticky, it is still really loose, it cannot hold a shape at all, please add more flour. Don't do what I did because this was an absolute nightmare. I had to add a lot of flour while I was trying to form this. It made a huge mess. I'm doing this really late at night. This is not what I, what I wanted to deal with. It did still turn out okay, not as pretty as I'm used to my loaves being. Um, but it did still turn out fine. It had a good texture to it. But um, yes, I had to work with this a lot. And so if your dough is still really loose like that, you cannot get it to hold a shape, 
you do want to make sure that you add more flour while it's mixing um, in the KitchenAid or, or if you're kneading it by hand, you do want to make sure that you're, you're getting more flour in there. So here I'm trying to form it into uh, the loaves, the shapes that they're going to need to be. I'm going to put it on parchment paper in, the, in some pots uh, that are the same shape as the pot I'm going to be cooking it in. And then I'm going to get a cover on those and um, cover it up and it's going to sit on top of the counter overnight with the lid on it. So here I'm actually preparing my dough for the next sourdough version I'm going to be making, which is the really soft sourdough bread. So I'm preparing what is called the first ferment, or really a second starter that's going to sit on the counter overnight. And I did one cup of active starter, one cup of warm filtered water, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, and then I mixed those together until it was all mixed up and there's no dry spots in the flour. Covered it with the wax paper or saran wrap and um, made sure that that had time to rise and ferment overnight. So this is the next morning. Before I deal with my other dough, I'm gonna go ahead and get um, these loaves that were already formed. I'm gonna get them in the oven at 500 degrees the pot that I'm cooking them in, I let preheat with the oven to 500 degrees. Then I put the loaves in the parchment paper, transferred those to the hot pot, covered it back up, and it's going to bake for 20 minutes. After the 20 minutes, I'm taking the lid off and I'm lowering the temperature to 450 degrees. We're talking Fahrenheit here, and it's going to bake for another 20 minutes to let the crust get nice and golden brown. So here, while that's in the oven finishing up, I am mixing up two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of honey, and one and a half cups of milk. Um, if you want to use a fermented milk, that is actually even better, like a buttermilk, or uh, if you're using raw milk, when it starts to go quote, quote, bad and curdling, you can even use something like that. And I'm warming that up on the stove, not to where it's too hot, you just want it slightly warm. And you want to make sure it's nice and smooth and all incorporated. And I am pouring that directly into that second starter or first ferment that was sitting on my counter overnight. So I pour it directly into that and I just mix it to incorporate it a little bit. It's not, it's not really going to mix into each other very well. That's okay. It does mix in once you add the flour and mix it on the um, stand mixer. But I do want to go ahead and kind of do some kind of a mix to um, get it in there a little better. So now I am adding, uh, the recipe is five cups. I, I said when I made this the first time that I wanted to measure this in grams. Um, I did not have time to do that today. So the recipe says five cups. I actually used only four cups of flour and my dough came out a lot um, firmer, I don't want to say drier, but firmer than the first time that I made it with just four cups. So my flour was definitely acting a little bit um, more different on this day than the first time I made it. So like I told you in the other video, your uh, temperature in your house, the weather outside, all that plays a factor when you're not measuring on a scale on how everything's turning out. So after my four cups of flour, I did put one tablespoon of salt and now we're going to mix it. And uh, my dough, it is a very different texture from the first time that I did it. I can stretch it up. It does start to break a little bit. And um, so I do want to let it mix a little bit longer because I want it to be able to stretch further without breaking. But it already is a firmer or a, little, a slightly drier dough than the first time I made this. So I was kind of concerned about it, but here it stretched pretty good. And I was just going to roll with it and see how it turned out. It does actually end up working very well. But I did only have to use four cups of flour on this day. The first time I made it, I had to use, I think it came out to be four and a half cups of flour. So I covered it with the wax paper again. And I, uh, after about two hours, it was doubled in size. And so I'm flouring the surface here and we're going to form these into bread loaves. So you can see here, you see the dough. It's, um, it's nice and smooth. It has a great texture to it after sitting for those couple of hours. It was like two or three hours probably, somewhere in there. 
And um, so I'm going to plop this out on the counter and I am going to break it into half to where I have enough dough to do two loaves. I don't measure it out to where it's completely perfect, but it was close enough. It still, they still came out really gorgeous. So I was actually happier with the bread loaves than I was with the artisan loaves. Um, but anyways, so I'm going to form these into, um, into sandwich loaves. I'm trying to half it here. I do end up um, taking a little bit from the other side. See, once I, once I form them a little bit more, I see that one of them is slightly larger. And so I do pinch off a little bit more. And then while I'm dealing with um, one dough, I'm just going to put that back in the bowl to where it stays out the way. And I'm going to be pushing this into rectangle-ish shape. It doesn't have to have like the, you know, perfect square corners or anything like that. But you do want it to, you can roll it or I'm just using my hands here and we're going to do a rectangle-ish shape. And so once I get it to this shape, I'm going to do two triangles. And then from the longer side of the triangle, I'm going to roll it up to the top corner of the triangle. And that helps give me a good structure to uh, for my sandwich bread loaf. And so now I'm going to try to roll it to smooth it out a little bit, try and get it um, even on all sides, even on the ends. And so I'm rolling it to me and then I'm pulling, pulling over from the top and kind of tucking it under to the bottom and then rolling it back and forth on the counter to try and get it nice and smooth to where it's smooth all all along that um, it's kind of like you're making a log I guess like a dough log and um, so I'm trying to get that smooth I do tuck the ends a little bit and then this actually does get a little longer than my pan is but it's okay I just get it in there try and get it as even as possible down in there I pick it up I'm gonna put it on top of my stove I do cover it with a light cloth and it rose for another couple of hours this did have more rising to do. This is late. I need to go ahead and get it baked because I can't stay up any longer. Um, Bryant's working on getting the boys down, and so Anna's going to hang out with me a little bit while he works on that so I can work on this. And um, so I'm, I'm scoring the bread. I'm just doing three slits. The, the way that I know it still has a little bit more rise to do on its own is when I uh, poke at it a little bit it bounces right back and so I'm wanting it I'm wanting to be able to poke at it and it stays in and this still bounces back pretty good but it's okay to go ahead and bake it while it's in that stage because it, it's still going to turn out well it's just not risen as high as it can be and so I uh, am doing something a little different than I did on my other one and so I'm brushing some melted butter on top I'm doing this to try to keep that um, crust on top a little softer to where it doesn't turn into a hard crust and so brushing it on top before you bake it can help with that and so I just melted a little bit of butter on the stove while the um, while the oven sorry can't think here while the oven was heating to 475 degrees Fahrenheit and um, so it, you know the, it made the stove hot enough to melt the butter and so um, I'm taking that butter and I'm just brushing it very lightly on top of that making sure that I have all of the crust evenly covered and um, hopefully we can keep the crust nice and soft and it did it did end up helping a lot with that crust because I you know with a sandwich loaf you don't want that that really crunchy top crust um, the parts that are in the pan stay nice and soft but you, you really don't want that top part to be super crunchy and hard to cut through. So now I'm going to put it in the oven and I baked it for 20 minutes. I did check on it at 18. It needed a little bit longer to go. So I went 20 and then while it's cooling on the cooling rack, I covered it with a towel and that also helped to trap in some moisture while it's cooling and keep that crust nice and soft.